Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be doing my thesis project presentation. Um, I decided to upload this a little bit early because I'm actually going first. So I wanted to give everyone enough time to um, watch it and everything and familiarize themselves with my project. Um, so obviously I am Hannah Rose Josephson. Um, so first off, I wanted to do a little section, um, meet the translator, me, so you could um, hear a little bit about me. All about me. Um, I am originally from St. Paul, Minnesota, and I graduated from Louisiana Tech University in May of 2020. I majored in political science and French and then minored in history. And my career aspirations are to translate in the intelligence community, um, which I will be excited to talk about later, hopefully. So now let's move on to talk about my source text, which is in French. Um, my project is in the language direction French to English. So I decided to translate a report from the um, French National Assembly, and it is on regional languages and um, the protection of them, heritage protection of them, and the promotion of them in France. Why did I choose this text? Um, so it, it was a super recent event. This was published in February of 2020, so it is super current, and I am very interested in looking at texts from a current point of view. Um, if you were in contrastive stylistics with me this semester, you know that I chose to talk about COVID-19 in that class for my project because I love to look at different texts with the point of view while it's going on. Um, I think we usually look at texts as in they were in past tense, but I like to look at things as they are happening. I think it's really interesting and I think it provides a totally different lens. So, and then I also have a personal interest in France's regional languages. Um, when I was an undergrad, I actually did an entire semester long research project about the standardization of the French language and the history, um, which is how I found out about all of the different regional languages and how they were affected by French becoming such a standardized language as it is today. And it also falls into my career goals. I want to work in the government um, and translate things for the government. So figuring out um, governmental kind of conventions, the different words I might be able to see, all of those things um, was factored into my decision for this text. So let's move on to talk about my approach. So with every project that I did during this program, I created for myself some sort of client um, so that way I could have a purpose. I didn't want every purpose to just be turning it in for a grade. And obviously that was the actual purpose, but I would imagine myself a client or an intended purpose or something so that I could kind of contextualize my work around that. And for this project, I envisioned that I was translating this with the purpose of being published by the French government as an official English translation. Um, occasionally, they will publish official English translations of their different laws. And I wanted this to look as though it could be one, um, that you could go on the French government's website, click around and find my translation. So in order to kind of facilitate this, I wanted to make efforts not to Americanize the text. Um, and I wanted it to be more like globally English rather than American English. I didn't want you to be able to read it and say, oh, this translator was American. Um, so in order to do that, I used European spelling. So adding in that extra U and words like color, favor. Um, and then something I actually didn't know was that um, and the European spellings, enroll is only spelled with one L. And that came up several times in my text and I actually had no idea that it was only spelled with one L. It still looks funny to me and I've seen it several times in my text. So I don't think I'll ever get used to that. 
but um, thank you to Microsoft Word for allowing me to put UK English as the um, target language. So I was able to catch that with the help of Spelltrack. So my workflow, I primarily worked in Memsource, but I transferred each sentence into a Word document as well. So what I did was I started out with my um, source text as a PDF in French. I then converted that to be a Word document in French. I copied that, so I then had a source document. Well, I had two source documents in French. One I kept as my source document, and the other, as I would work through sentences in Memsource, I would copy the sentence that I translated from Memsource and paste it in to the Word document. And I did this because I wanted to keep the um, formatting as equal as possible. I wanted the exact formatting because like I said, I wanted this to be able to be published on the French government's website. So I wanted to follow every single stylistic convention that they did. I wanted to have the exact same fonts, the exact same colors, the exact same page size. I wanted all of that to be exactly the same. So I found that the best way to do that was to just copy and paste each sentence over. Um, it was a little bit tedious, but I am someone who likes to be able to see kind of everything put together as much as it can be. And with Memsource, you're working in little segments. And although there is kind of um, like a preview at the bottom of the workflow, it isn't formatted very well. Um, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't look right to me. So it was helpful to me to be able to see all of that put out in a Word document. Um, I don't think this is probably the way for everyone. Like I said, it was a little bit tedious and honestly probably unnecessary, but it did help me get that formatting as I was going instead of having to, once I was done with all of the translation work, having to go in and edit all of those to be uniform with the source text. It was kind of already done for me because I had converted it from that original and then just copied my English translations into it. But the segmentation in Memsource, amazing. I don't think I can ever go back to just straight up translating in a Word document. Being able to go segment by segment and it's already laid out for me and it's not all put together was revolutionary. I had um, attempted to use Memsource on a smaller project for, um, I believe, theory of translation. Um, and I, I didn't like it. But for a large project like this, Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I am a, I am now a believer in cat tools. I was always a skeptic, despite everything I've learned about them over the program. I was like, okay, I see, sure, yeah, but you can pry this word document out of my cold dead hands. I'm a believer now. I'm a believer. This has, this has truly transformed me. So resources, um, I kind of divided this into subsections of kinds of resources I used. Um, so the first one I use is wordreference.com and that is just um, a bilingual dictionary. It's really, really simple to use, easy to use. So that was kind of my main source that I was constantly checking. And then um, ling, lingue, lingue, I, mean, I will never know how to pronounce that word dot com um, is also an amazing resource, especially for phrases. And then I was able to search the um, phrases that came up um, and then see if there was like a EU source, a UN source. And that was always amazing. I love that dictionary and it's a definite, um, that's definitely a super useful tool. Um, and then merriamwebster.com for kind of, once I found a translation, or a definition of a word um, on like word reference. And I, I, if I didn't know what it meant in English, I could look it up. Um, and it was also useful for finding um, synonyms. If I didn't particularly like the way a word sounded, but I still wanted that kind of meaning or I wanted a similar meaning, that was really useful. Um, and then Microsoft Word Spell Check, which isn't technically online, but as I said earlier, it was completely invaluable to me for trying to pick out those words that are spelled differently in European English. And then I also use several government publications. Um, so the first one I used is the glossary, 
glacier parlementaire français anglais from the um, senate and that was really useful it is honestly just a list a glossary of um french words and then their english translation and then i also used kind of as a parallel text um the french constitution both the French and English versions. There is um, an English version on the French government's website. I believe it's published by um, the National Assembly actually. And so that was really useful um, to kind of parse out the stylistic conventions, um, if they repeat words or shorten them and stuff like that. So that was very, very useful to me. Um, and then the Petit Lexique Parlementaire, also published by the National Assembly, which again is just, um, some words and definitions, that one is entirely in French. So it wasn't, I didn't use it as often as the French English, but it was super useful to me as well. And then I did have a couple of print resources, um, Le Bon Usage, which is like the end all be all of um, French grammar. And it's huge, it's gigantic. Um, if you are not familiar with Le Bon Usage, look it up because it's, it's gigantic and I am so happy that I own it. It is invaluable if you are a French speaker because French is so standardized. There are so many rules that you need to know. And then vocabulaire juridique, um, which is just a French legal dictionary um, that I actually got shipped to me from France. And I love it, it is so useful. So the translation itself, let's look at an example sentence. So here's an example sentence, which is actually the first sentence of, well, it's actually two sentences, but it is the first sentence of um, my text, the actual text and not um, the beginning section that is just page numbers. Um, so let's see. Les langues de France sont en danger. L'UNESCO classe en danger d'extinction la quasi-totalité des 75 langues régionales parlées sur le territoire français, français en métropole et autres mer à quelques rares exceptions près considérées comme simplement vulnérables, dont le Basque. And I will give you a section, a second to look at that. And then my um, translation. The languages of France are in danger. UNESCO classes almost all the 75 regional languages spoken in French territory as being in danger of extinction, with some rare exceptions, such as Basque, being considered simply vulnerable. My thoughts on the translation and this process as a whole. Um, terminology is key. So I work in legal and governmental texts. So terminology is so, so important. And even though I've been working on primarily these types of texts throughout my time in this program, I'm still not, I would say even well-versed in all of the terminology. I am still learning. I'm still researching. There are so many words um, that I still don't know that I'm still not entirely familiar with that it's going to take me time to learn, which is, I mean, part of being a translator, you're constantly learning, constantly researching. Um, but as I continue to work in this field, I know that they will come much more easily to me. Um, and then another thing, it is very easy to fall into Americanization. Um, I kept catching myself, not adding that you or, um just sounding very american um even to my own ear and um jean who was working with me who was my advisor on this was able to catch um the spellings for me that i just didn't even catch even when i would look at it to edit because it doesn't look wrong and it's not but it is wrong for the context in which i'm trying to use this document so um i think the more i practice it it will help me um it's just this is my first time really trying not to sound american actively trying not to sound american so um this was my first foray into it it'll get easier but it was very easy to fall into um and then a very positive thing is that this really solidified for me that this is for me this is what i want to do this is what i want out of my career 
um, I just, this is my bread and butter. I loved it. I love this document. I love this text, this kind of text. It was just, it was a great experience for me and it feels really gratifying to just know solidly that this is what I want. Um, and it's, you know, what I came into this program thinking I was going to want to do, but you know, things change. I had never really had experience with it. So it could have gone completely opposite and I could have been like, I hate it. I want to do poetry translation. Um, but no, this really, this really is for me. I am so happy with my kind of choices thus far and where I see my career going. And then finally, um, trust your gut. I had so many instances where I would, something could have been right. Um, but I was just like, Hmm, I don't know. Something about it just seems a little bit off and I would look and it would be if there would be something to change there would be something that i could improve on there could be a different word i could use a more a more specialized term that i could use um and that happened several several times over the course of this project so just listen to yourself listen to your gut um and look things up if you think something might be even a little bit dicey just look it up you never know Worst thing is you were right the first time and you know, no harm, no foul. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you to Jean for being an amazing advisor, helping me out so much during this process. Um, thank you to Annalise for being amazing and again, helping me throughout this entire process. And thank you to Roxana for being my reviewer. Um, we haven't spoken yet, obviously, but um, I did have a class with you earlier in this program and I know that you are great. So I am excited for you to be reviewing my thesis project. And thank you to um, Sophia and Adam for watching. So have a great day.